Hey everyone, today's species spotlight is one that I've been holding off on for quite a while, and that's because I was waiting for these guys to get a little bit bigger so you can really see how beautiful and impressive these animals are in person. And truthfully, they're still pretty small. But today we are talking about the Argentine boa, or the Argentinian boa. Now, these guys are a subspecies of boa constrictor, so they're not a full classified species. But boa taxonomy has been a mess for the last 10, 20 years, where everything and everyone argues about what, what is and is not a species, subspecies, what's a constrictor, what's a common boa. But generally speaking, and I'm going to be super, super quick and vague about this, but we're usually talking about three different species, imperator, constrictor, and sigma. There are some now new, newly defined, fairly newly defined ones that are considered their whole species classification, but we're not talking about that today. That's a whole other video, and I've talked a little bit about it in some other videos that even they might be a little bit outdated at this point. In the imperators, we're basically talking about the common boas. That's where most of the morphs come from. And then the really only subspecies in them other than localities are the Pearl Islands, the Sabage, the boa imperator Sabage. And then the constrictors, that's where these guys come in. That's been truly, truly a hot topic debate. Back, you know, even 5, 10, 15 years ago, there were eight to 10 subspecies. Now we're talking four to six, and it's all these other weird things. But the Argentine boa has always been a for sure subspecies of the constrictor, a true boa constrictor. Their actual Latin name is right here because I will forever mispronounce their actual subspecies name. But these guys are called Argentine for pretty obvious reason, right? Da 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 da, they're from the country of Argentina down found in Southern South America. However, they're also found in parts of Paraguay and fairly accurately reported in being a little bit into the country of Bolivia as well. Now, these guys are found down in South America. However, the region where they're found isn't the same as the Amazon. They're actually found in a region called the Gran Chaco or the Gran Chaco. However you want to pronounce that, I've heard it pronounced both ways. Don't get mad at me. The Gran Chaco is a really cool area of South America that we'll get into a little bit in the video, but that, that name sounds familiar. That's actually where, you know, the Golden Chaco Tarantula comes from. Now, the Argentine boas are well known for their very dark coloration. As you can see, this girl here is pretty dark with their much lighter gray to white coloration. However, that can vary a little bit into some really interesting colors. And again, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that further in the video. So you gotta stay with me on the full video on this one. Now, these guys are a little bit more heavier bodied as a whole, as you can see, pretty thick, right? Not overweight by any means, but definitely a little bit more of that solid square bread box than some of the more kind of rounded imperators or even some of the different locales of like the red tails of say like the Peruvians or the Surinams. And then in addition to that, these guys are well known for being a little bit larger on average as a whole, being sexually dimorphic like all the different boas out there, males being smaller, females being bigger with males averaging six to eight feet which is already a little bit more with the males of a lot of the other ones usually being in the seven foot ranges being a lot more of their capped average. And then with the females, eight to 10 feet. So it's still in that boa constrictor range. And again, it is very well noted and fairly frequently these guys do exceed that 10 foot into close to that 13 or just over foot range, just like some of the other true boa constrictors. Now, these guys are absolutely wonderful animals. Now, where these guys come from, again, like I said, this is the Gran Chaco. The Gran Chaco is very, very different than the Amazon. And it's a huge, huge expanse. It covers thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of really cool semi-arid deciduous forests that only seem small in comparison to the Amazon. Basically, when you look at the continent of South America, you have the Andes Mountains that run along the west that divide just, just west of the Andes Mountains there. And then you have the Amazon into the Amazon River Basins and that huge, giant, largest forest on the continent. And then just below that is the Gran Chaco. The Gran Chaco is a very diverse area where it is not only containing some of the hottest parts on the entire continent, there's plains, there's savannas, there's wetlands, the floodplains, but they're definitely a little bit more deciduous and the temperatures fluctuate quite a bit more there than they do in the Amazon as well it's also part where a lot of the actual people do live down there as well where a lot of the actual more industries other than just pure logging come from now 
Because of that weird temperature fluctuations, the Argentine boa is one of the species that definitely occupies more of those smaller micro habitats as opposed to many of the other boa constrictors that you would typically be thinking about in South America, where it's all one big rainforest and they're mostly coming out of different little areas and hides and distinct ecosystems during the different parts of their active period and times of the day. These guys are found in much more specific areas inside of the entire region that is the Gran Chaco. And those are more of the wetland areas, the cooler areas down on the mountainsides where there's more shade, where there's more humidity, where it floods more seasonally. That's where these guys are found in the much more cooler, wetter areas. And so these guys are often associated with one specific prey item in this really cool area, and that is the viscacha. And I'm probably mispronouncing that right, so here it is. This basically is a very large rodent native to the area that kind of looks like if a rabbit in the Hulk had a love baby, and that's what these guys are. And the relationship with the Argentine boas and the viscacha, or however again you pronounce it, it's very similar to that of like the bull snake, pine snake, gopher snake, and the pocket gopher where not only do they get their namesake from that, but these guys prey on those, for the instance of the gopher snakes, the gophers, the viscoshas, and then they use their burrows as habitat and hides and shelter. And that's exactly where these guys are associated with that rodent species. And so because of that, a lot of times they are considered fairly terrestrial, even when compared to the other boa constrictor subspecies. Now, in truth, they are not entirely terrestrial. They are often found in and amongst trees and including fairly high up into them into even the lower canopy using different hollows and logs and again, the trees to aid and shelter during very hot parts of the day, during periods of activity, as well as hunting for other mammals and birds. Sorry, she's just really, really pretty. I love these guys. They're really, really cool. Now, in captivity, these guys are often overlooked for what I think are two real reasons. The first of which is pretty obvious, and that is morphs. There are not, oh, you okay? There are not a whole lot of morphs associated with these guys, and the other of which is availability. These guys are pretty rare in the hobby, but the actual care and keeping and personality of these guys is close to identical as some of the other boa constrictor species. They, are they can be just as docile, as you can see here, and just as food motivated, also a very good example is this girl here too, as any of the other ones that classically boa constrictors and imperators are well known for usually having a fairly placid attitude, especially once they get a little bit older, as well as being very food motivated. Just for instance, with the very small litter of boa imperators that we just had recently, every single baby took a frozen thaw right away. Not many ball python people could pray for a situation like that. So that's why these guys typically make very good pets. However, they also require very large habitats. As we said before, a female Argentine boa can get over 10 feet long. And as also previously mentioned, they will climb. They're not purely terrestrial. So these guys do require very large habitats with at least a little bit of climbing opportunity. Although I will say that, remember we talked about those microclimates where these guys also occupy and exist? Well, that means that these guys typically actually prefer lower temperatures with their basking range, usually in the 80 to 85-ish range, with some of the imperators and constrictors being a little bit higher than that. Typically nothing over 90 for sure, but usually a little bit warmer that they will spend time basking in those areas. In addition to that, they can actually tolerate lower temperatures for longer periods of time too. We're talking in the mid 60s to the mid 70s, which is pretty cool for a purely tropical species. Now, in addition to, as I said previously about the availability thing like that, and the whole morph issue, why these guys are really overlooked for morphs, there are in fact a couple different morphs and coloration variations to the Argentine boas, and I'll show you one right now. So this little boy is also an Argentine boa, a pure Argentinian, no hybridization happening, MC or BCO, boa constrictor oscillarius, or however you pronounce it, because I always mispronounce it as always. Now this guy is, again, it's a pure locality and he's actually not a morph. There are at least two for sure morphs. I have heard debates on whether or not a hypo whether or not is a true 
uh, locality or subspecies morph associated with them. If someone is a little bit more familiar with the boa and with the Argentine boas, please let me know in the comments. I would love to know that information. But they do for sure have a motley, which is you know a very famous one that we're all probably well aware of, as well as a T positive or a tyrosinase positive albino with these guys. And actually that girl that we just had on here is actually POSPET for T positive. However, that doesn't really uh, mean too, too much to me. But the color variations is actually what's really cool about these guys. In addition to, you know, with, as we usually associate with the other constrictors, there's the true red tails that we really like, where sometimes the Southern Brazilians and the Peruvians usually have very, very red tails and the Surinams can sometimes have really cool peaks and the Guyanas typically are more purple, although we've had the conversation about the Guyanas and Surinams. And again, if you want to listen to that, here's the boa constrictor video. If I can remember to put it right there, if not, it'll be at the end of the video as a clickable link, but they do vary in coloration. They're not purely always just that kind of black and gray white. They can have really cool highlights of pink and red, yellow to burnt orange coloration. And then through a process of line breeding, we have managed to get animals that are very, very high pink and orange in coloration. And one breeder particularly who has kept a closed stock for the almost the last 20 years has been specifically breeding these very high pink, high color animals and has now developed an entire line called Max Pink. And this boy here you can see is a pretty good representation of that. He's definitely kind of like a really nice peachy orange pink color. And in addition to that, they've also started to do some of pure line breeding where it really highlights the white part of them and whether that is called the max white. These guys are definitely a very underappreciated, underrated species of boa that are really, really beautiful and I think definitely need to be part of uh, future collections. However, these guys are a little bit unique to boas. The other reason that I mentioned, I think it thinks this point two different times, has to do with availability. The Argentine boa is the only subspecies of boa that is actually classified as a CITES 1 species or subspecies. And what that means is that these animals live past tense or parts of them cannot be exported from the countries of their origin. So that means is that what is outside of the country right now, what we have in the United States or over in Europe or in other countries is what we have to work with as far as legally able to have. And so because of that, the availability of them is very difficult and there's not a whole lot of them in there. In addition to that, these guys are still technically considered threatened, so they won't be removed from the CITES Class 1 anytime soon. And that is because the Gran Chaco, in addition to being so diverse and so crazy and varied, and it really, it's unfortunately one of the most deforested areas on the entire planet, and definitely on the continent of South America. The Gran Chaco is part of the is part of the continent where most of the agriculture and a lot of the ranching happens, and so there's a lot of deforestation there. And so because of that, these guys at one point had the largest natural range of any of the boa subspecies, but now is very fragmented and definitely still in the uh, still definitely threatened. However, as we do know, there are some hopeful rainforest restoration programs and things like that that they're working on. They're mostly, at least in the area where the Argentine boa comes from, mostly in the most northern part of the range that really kind of butts up against the very kind of bottom of the Amazon area where most of the rainforest restoration projects and uh, attempts are happening. But we are still very hopeful that we will have these guys in the future. However, captive breeding programs, what is being done not only with private keepers like um, the person who we get this guy from, as well as other private keepers and zoological facilities will hopefully be able to be uh, so where even if the worst does happen and this kind of tiptoes into that kind of invisible arc mentality to where if the worst does happen and that we do lose all natural habitat and these guys can't be uh, found in the wild anymore and they're extinct in the wild, hopefully down the road we're able to make some new habitat for them to be reintroduced or at the very least we'll still have these guys available in the future for future generations to be able to see, appreciate, learn, and love. I absolutely love boa constrictors. I, I mean, I'm seriously, you guys, I'm seriously, you guys. These guys are absolutely amazing. I love them so much. I've always loved the Argentine boas, even way dating back to when I very first got into this. And before I knew any better, we got blue, our Bolivian uh, or BCA or Amorelii 
uh, crossed with these guys with the Argentine boas who won't be part of the breeding program um, because we are trying to keep uh, these guys as pure animals. And, you know, we've talked a little bit about breeding in other videos before where, I mean, it's kind of, we're already essentially playing God about what we like, what gets to, what characteristics, traits, and animals get to reproduce and what don't. But I am trying to hopefully be able to keep pure, uh, pure Argentinian animals for the future. And Blue is just a very special one off we love very much. But hopefully you guys enjoy today's video. I certainly love these guys. I, like I said at the very beginning, I've been holding off to show you just how beautiful these animals are. They are honestly my favorite of all of the boas. They have a very hard time to find, uh, figuring out whether or not boas are my favorite type of snake, but I will say that in the boas, the Argentines are definitely my favorite. These guys are amazing and beautiful animals. So hopefully again, you guys enjoy today's video. If you want to check out the whole species pilot playlist, it's here at the end as always. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification as well as if you want to check out kind of the differences between the constrictors and the broaders. And I do a pretty, I think, good breakdown of kind of the differences of the imperators and the constrictors talking a little bit about um, their speciation. But again, as also previously mentioned, because very circular today, um, it might be a little bit out of date and definitely might be contested with some people who are much more in depth with their boa knowledge or kind of set in the ways that they think that they should or should not be classified or however may have you. Not to say there's anything wrong with any of those people. The species and taxonomy is very, very much a gray area that does have quite a few headaches involved with it, but can be a very important thing. And while yes, as humans, we like to make categories and put everything in a neat little box so we can figure that out, sometimes that is for the benefit for not only us, but for these guys as well. So try not to get too, too mad at me, the boa snobs of the world, but I do really love these guys and I do want to appreciate um, just how amazing these guys are and I appreciate you all for watching as well. So again, I hope everyone enjoyed today's video. I hope everyone is having a great day and we will check you next time.